Hello, hello everyone and welcome once again to another art adventure with me, Lance Cardinal. So glad to be here with you today and so happy to be presented today by the Aboriginal Congress of Alberta Association. And as always, we're here today for such a fun day filled with crafts and some Cree culture and a lot of fun. So I hope you are all ready for it. Now, speaking of ready, I'm still wearing my mask and I hope you are too. We are certainly not out of the woods as far as COVID-19 goes. Uh, the pandemic is still here and I hope you were all out there doing your part to stay safe by wearing your mask wherever you go, by washing your hands very thoroughly whenever you are in a public place, coming in or out of your home, and of course staying socially distant about uh, six meters, uh, six feet apart from each other and uh, making sure that you're staying uh, as far away from each other as possible to keep each other safe. Now we're doing that to keep ourselves safe, the people we love safe, and especially those who might have a little bit of sickness inside of them, or maybe even our elders in our community who are our knowledge keepers, the people who are so important to the continuance of our culture, we need to keep them safe as well. So yes, wear your mask with pride. I know yours is probably pretty cool, got some great designs on it, so that's very, very good. Okay, yes everyone, hello and welcome once again. I'm so excited to be here and as we always do when we see each other, we like to say hello and of course, we like to say hello and Cree. So we're gonna say hello and Cree and of course, the Cree word for hello, I'm sure you all know it. That's right, it's Tanse. That's right, the Cree word for hello is Tanse. I know you've all been practicing it since last time I saw you, so I wanna hear you nice and loud. Shout out through that screen the word Tanse when I say it on the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three, Tanse! <laughs> Good job, those of you out there who did it, I can hear you all the way here in my studio in Edmonton. And I know you guys out there are so excited to, to be practicing some Cree words, because you know, it's great, so, so fun. All right, you guys, so today, because we are gonna be doing a craft today, I wanna introduce a, the Cree word of the day. Now, the Cree word of the day is a word or phrase that we use that sort of talks about what today's craft is, so it's kinda of like a clue. And today's special Cree word is the word for moosehide moccasin. And the Cree word for moosehide moccasin is pahkigin nuiksksin. That's right, pahkigin nuiksksin. There it is. So I want you to try with me on the count of three, we're gonna say the word Bakigen Nuiksin, and that means moose hide moccasin. Are you ready? Here we go. Piak, Nisa, Nista, and Bakigen Nuiksin. That's pretty good, not bad at all. It's a bit of a harder word today and a little bit more complicated, but I know you out there did your best to try, and that's all that matters. So, perfect. Today's Cree word. Now, get rid of that word, and let's move on to our special craft of the day. I'm so excited to do this one with you today. It's gonna to be so much fun. I'm so excited because today, we're gonna to be doing something based on the words moose hide moccasin. We're gonna be making these adorable moccasin paperweights. Aren't they so cool? These are made of rocks from outside and they're painted like little moccasins. And they can be used as paperweights or a fun decoration for your desk or your bedroom or your locker or wherever you wanna put them. They can also be an amazing gift for someone that you know and love. And of course, we all know moccasins. They're the things we wear on our feet and uh, we can make them in whatever way we want. But today, we're gonna make moccasins just like these ones out of rocks with some Alberta rose designs on the front, which are so, so fun. So we're gonna do that right now. So the first thing we're gonna do before we begin every project, as always, is gather together all of our supplies. Now the first thing we're gonna need for this project, of course, are some rocks. Now I went outside and gathered these rocks from nature and I washed them up and got them all ready. And you, you wanna find rocks that sort of look like feet already, that kinda of have that moccasin feel. Now you can do one rock or two rocks. Today I'm gonna to do two, just so we have a pair of matching moccasins. Now remember, if you are going out into nature and taking something from our mother earth, you must follow the protocols. And if you take something from the earth, 
we leave some tobacco and we pray to the Creator and we thank the Creator for the beautiful bounty that we are taking from the earth to create our art today. So we make sure and always do that when we go outside, even if we're picking sweet grass or mint or anything like that, always leave behind an offering of tobacco to uh, honor the earth and to thank the earth for their beautiful bounty. So yes, two rocks, perfect. Next part of our supplies is, oh, some fur trim. Now, I have different types of trim, which I buy at the dollar store. Uh, today, we're gonna use some little brown furry trims, but you can buy uh, whatever kind of trim you want. You can also use yarn. You can also use actual fur from animals, but you gotta make sure it's kind of short-haired like this so that it, it looks like a, to the right scale of, of a moccasin that we're gonna be doing today. The next thing we're gonna need, of course, is some paint. Now I've already on my styrofoam plate, which I love to use, it doesn't absorb the paint. These are very inexpensive and easy to throw away um, or recycle, whatever you wanna do. But this, I've already gathered all the paint together and I'm gonna need today is moose hide yellow, black, pink, green, white, and yellow. So those are the colors we're using today for our moose hide moccasins and I hope you have those colors close by or ready to go on your palette, which is what we call the, the thing we put our paint in, our palette. And I hope your palette is full of paint and ready to go for this amazing project. Put that aside for now. Next thing we're gonna need, of course, are some brushes. And I have here a few different size brushes, uh, larger brushes for the larger paint we put on the, the, the piece and a medium sized brush and a small brush. Now you can use whatever size brushes you are comfortable with, but these are the ones that I'm gonna use today. We're also gonna need some water. So I have that right here. And the water is always used to clean and rinse our brushes whenever we use them. It's very, very important. We wanna keep our brushes clean and our workspace clean as well. We're also gonna need some paper towels like this to put right in front of our water so we have something to rinse our brush till it's clear, rub it on our paper towel, and if we still see color, we rinse it again and we rub it again, and when there's no color coming off, our brush is clean. So that's a little trick there. We're also gonna need for this project a glue gun. Now I have mine already heated and ready to go, nice and warm. Now if you're not comfortable with that and you're too young to use a glue gun, maybe you can ask someone you love and care about to help you out with that because that's what our friends and family are for. You can talk to your mom or dad or your Muslim or your cookum, but I really hope that you're doing this together as a family and working as a team in your home to work on this amazing project together. Also, we're gonna need a hair dryer. <laughs> I know it's something very interesting and different you don't normally see in an art project, but this little tool right here will help us dry the paint faster and be able to keep our project going without having to wait for paint to dry. So that's what I use, but you don't have to use that as well. You can also just let the paint air dry, but you're gonna have to take a break in between each color. So that's up to you. Let's see, do we have everything we need? I think we are good to go. All right, let's begin our project. So like I said before, our two little moccasins are gonna be made of rocks. Here's our samples. We're gonna put those right over here, sort of like to see what we're gonna be making. We'll have that there as an example so we can have it ready to go. Now, first thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna paint our rocks. Okay, but first we need some uh, paper to lie down on the table to make sure that we don't get paint on our table. So you can put down a uh, paper towel, you can put down newspaper, whatever you want. I'm gonna use white paper. Now I have a whole large supply of white paper that I can choose from. So I'm just gonna use an 11 by 17 piece that I have from my stock of paper on the side. And that's gonna protect the table from getting paint on it and to let things go a little bit cleaner. <laughs> All right, so first we just put our rocks down here and we'll start with our first color. All right, we're gonna paint the moose hide yellow. Now, be sure and roll up your sleeves, whatever you're wearing, or maybe even throw on top of your clothes something that will keep your clothes safe. These paints, which are acrylic paints, they don't come out very easily from clothes. So you wanna make sure that you are using, uh, wearing something you don't mind getting a little bit dirty. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, like I said, is paint our rock the moose hide yellow. Now this color I had custom made for me at a paint store, but you can go to a craft store and get a bit of yellow, a little bit of brown, and mix it together and create your own color. It can be whatever color you want. Like I always say, there's no rules to art, it's up to you, there's no wrong way to do it. So we're gonna begin this now. Now I'm using my larger brush to paint so that it does cover a lot more space quite quickly. And as you can see, 
The rock loves to take the color of the paint, so it's not going to be too hard to do. And remember, like I said, we're going to use a hair dryer to speed up the process, so we're not waiting all day and night for our paint to dry. Now, I don't worry too much about the bottom. I think I'm going to do it today just because we are taking our time and doing it correctly, but sometimes you don't have to. If, the, if your craft is not going to sit and it's not going to roll around, it's going to sit on the table, then you don't have to. Some of our, our moccasins here, some of them don't have the bottoms painted, but you can't even tell. This one does. So it depends on your choice. Today, I'm going to paint this one, and I'm going to leave the bottom painted on one, and maybe not on the other. I'm not sure yet. So we put our paint on, not too goopy, not too, not too much, just enough to cover it up. Now, sometimes you have to do a couple coats if your rock is a bit darker. These rocks should be okay for one coat of paint, just enough to get that color on and make that wonderful smoked or tanned moose hide color that we all know and love from home. Now I'm sure a lot of you out there have a pair of moccasins at home or muckalucks or some sort of moose hide slippers that was made by your cookum or your musum or somebody in your family who loves and cares about you that you value so dearly. I haven't even decided where, what side of the rock I'm going to use for the moccasin for this one. I think that's going to be my bottom. I'm in my top right there. There it is. It just happens. See, sometimes you just ask for something and it comes to you. All right. So there we go. We've painted our rock. I think it looks pretty good so far. Now we're going to rinse our brush. Whoa, brand new brush, brand new water. Everything's getting nice and clean. And we take our brush and we rinse the water out. And oh, look, we have a little bit more paint on it. We're going to rinse it just a little bit more as well as my fingers. I got a little bit of paint on them. Once we have our, our brush clean, ah oh yes, there it is, coming out clean, perfect. That brush is done, we're not gonna use that one again. I'm gonna use some of this paper towel to wipe, wipe some of the paint off my hands, just so I'm not too messy. <laughs> but you know, as we all know, being messy is half the fun of these projects, so that is totally, totally okay. All right, so now we're gonna get our blow dryer right here, our hair dryer, and we're gonna, we're gonna dry the rocks so that they uh, dry quite quickly. Now I'm gonna use a low setting and dry the rocks. Now again, these hair dryers do get very, very hot. So if you're not comfortable using a hair dryer by yourself, maybe it's something you can ask your mom or dad or whoever you're with, to do for you to help you out. All right, looks like the top is all done. I'm gonna roll over the, the rock and do the bottom. And as you can see, you can kind of tell when the paint is dry, it goes from shiny to not so shiny. So that's pretty cool. Here we go again, another rock. Now this is easier to do on a low setting. It's not as hot and won't burn you. But if you want to go in a higher setting, it'll go faster, but it's a little bit more warm. All right, there we go. Just about done. And perfect. Two moccasins ready to go. And I love how they turned out. I think they look absolutely perfect. Now, let's... Switch our paper around like this so we're not seeing all that paint under our moccasins and we're going to keep going. The next part of our moose hide moccasins, and these are, <laughs> the shape of these feet are a little bit different but that's how it is in nature. We can't control that. That's just the way it goes. <laughs> the next thing we're going to do is paint where we think our foot will go into our moccasin. So we have a spot right in our moccasin, right about there, that we're going we're gonna to paint that hole and we're just going to use our, our mind to decide how big that hole will be. So we take some of our black paint, just like this, and we find what we think will be the top of our moccasin. There we go, I'm gonna do it just like that. One. Take some more black paint. And, hmm, I think I'm doing this one right. I think I'm gonna put this one, yeah. I think that's the way, there we go. Left and right foot, nope, right and left foot. These look like two left feet to me, but that's okay. <laughs> the creator makes the rocks however he wants, he or she. So we're going to just go with that. So now we do that. 
we paint on the rock what we think the whole of the moccasin will be. Now, we don't have to think about it too much because a lot of it will be covered by the fur later on. So we do that just like that and we paint it up. There we go, two black spots representing the holes in the moccasin. I think that's a pretty good start. I like how they look. Now I'm gonna take my hair dryer and I'm gonna blow dry that dry just so I don't mix it with my white later on when I work on the next color. And again, rinsing our brushes very thoroughly until they run clean. Very nice. Okay, hair dryer time. <laughs> Now, as you can see, the black didn't fully cover, so I'm gonna take some more black and do a second coat once it's dry, which it really is now from the blow drying. So we're gonna add a little bit more black. And again, this isn't that necessary, but I just want it to be a nice dark black when I put my fur on. There we go. Rinsing that brush out now. Perfect. All right, now let's blow dry it again. There we go, now it's not completely and fully dry. I can tell it's a little bit wet, but that's okay. We can move on to the next step knowing that that's gonna be a little bit wet and we'll just watch our fingers, even though we're covered in paint already. <laughs> All right, the next step we're gonna do is work on the vamp. Now the vamp is the front part of our moccasin. I'm gonna show you a sample right now. Now these are my muckalucks. And my muckalucks, I absolutely love. Now they have a beautiful indigenous pattern here, red fox fur on the top, but right in front here, this part of the muckaluck, which is also seen in the moccasin, is called the vamp. And the vamp is a place where you do all your beadwork, your fancy designs, and a lot of these designs uh, are, are passed down from generation to generation, and so they're very unique. All right, back to our project again. We're ready to paint our vamp. We're gonna need our white paint to paint the vamp, okay? So we go into our palette, get some of the white. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of paint here. I didn't need this much paint. You only need about a, a quarter size of paint, maybe a loony size of paint. You don't need that much. So we're gonna start painting our vamps. Now you wanna paint, um, you don't have to go right up to the black if you don't want to. That part will be covered with our, our fur but I like to go as far down the front as we can. This rock, and this is a challenge, all the rocks are different in the world. No two rocks are alike, so we have to be ready to paint our vamp and follow the lines of the rock and listen to how it wants us to be painted. So there we go. You see that part of my, my moccasins kind of funky shaped, but that's okay, I put the white part anyway and gave it a little white front. So there we go. That's the best we can do and that's all we can ask. <laughs> do your best to make a moccasin vamp, but it's not gonna be perfect and that's okay. Nothing in nature is. But the fact that you're making this by hand, probably for someone you love, is all that matters. Because, you know, art is not about how it looks in the end or if it's better than somebody else's or whatever. We're creating art for the fun of it to experience being creative, expressing ourselves in a different way. We don't always have to express ourselves through music or through singing or through talking or through writing. We can do it through our art. And today we are expressing how much we honor and respect moccasins. And they're a big part of our culture. We wear them at ceremony. We wear them around the house. We are gifted them. We create them with people we love. And they've been a part of our culture for a long, long time. All right, so 
There we go, I got two moccasin fronts right like that. It's not bad, these are two different size moccasins, but that's okay. We have somebody who has one big left foot and a small right foot, in our imaginations, of course. So we're gonna rinse that brush out of all that white paint, if we can. And we're gonna move on to the next step. But of course, first, we have to blow dry the white so that when we paint the flower on, which is our next step, that it's dry and we'll take the paint quite easily. Okay, here we go. All right, and there we go. It is now dry enough for us to continue on with our project, so I think we should do that. All right, the next step we're gonna do is to paint our flowers. Now today, we're gonna paint Alberta roses because I'm from Alberta and my family tradition uh, from my grandmother, my aunties, and all the people who do beadwork in my life, they all like to use the Alberta rose in their art. And so I've adapted some of that as well as part of my family traditions. So first thing we're gonna do for Alberta rose, as you can see here, is make our little yellow center. So we take some of our yellow paint, just like this, and we put a blob of it on the front. We don't have to worry about making a big circle. We're not gonna draw a circle. We're gonna press that brush in and let the paint do the work for us. So here we go. Is... Sploink, done. <laughs> don't think about it too much. Don't worry about it too much. It is what it is. Second circle and zoink. Just like that, perfect. Now I think I wanna go a little bit bigger with my yellow circle, so I'm gonna add a little bit more paint, and again, not to worry too much, we just put it on and we press. Now this is my choice for a flower or for a design on my moccasins, that you don't have to do this. You can do whatever you want there. You can pick another flower that you know or that you want from your family. You can ask your mom or your cook or whoever you're with what types of things that your family puts on moccasins if your family makes moccasins. If your family does not make moccasins or beadwork, you get to choose whatever you like You like for a design on your moccasin as well, okay? So next up we're gonna do, of course, is the pink petals of the Alberta rose. Now, as you can see here in our sample flower, the Alberta rose has five petals. Now let's count them, okay? First in English and then in Cree. One, two, three, four, Five. Five petals of flowers. Now let's do it in Cree. Piak, Nisa, Ninsta, Niwa, Nianin. That's right, five. <laughs> so cool. If you know Cree and Cree numbers, then great. I hope you, you said them along with me. If you don't, rewind the video, try it again and again until you get up to number five. And now you can practice your Cree numbers. Amazing. All right, so we're going to paint these five petals on right now with our pink paint. So I get some of my pink paint on my brush and again it's the same rules you don't have to worry too much about um, drawing the lines on we're gonna let them paint do the work for us so first one we're gonna do is this one and we're gonna go piak niso ninsta niwa nianin perfect five petals. I'm going to make them a little bit bigger because I want my Alberta roses to be quite round. So we go back again, same paintbrush, same paint, and just make it a little bit wider so it looks a little bit more like an Alberta rose. And like I always say, it doesn't have to be anything, it can be however you want, but I would like my Alberta rose to have bigger petals. So there we go. First one. And there it is. Done, let's go on the second one. And again, now that I know I want my petals a little bit bigger, I'm gonna make them bigger from the very beginning. Okay, here we go. Piak. Niso. Ninsto. Niwa. And Nianen. 
There we go. Yes, and there's my two Alberta roses. Oh my goodness, I absolutely love them so far. They look absolutely perfect. And of course, they don't match. They're not exactly the same. And you know what I love about that? I love everything about that because nothing should be perfect in art. It should have flow and energy and, and you know, just happen as it's supposed to happen. It's the best part about art is not planning too much of it, just going with the flow and letting the creativity happen. It's so exciting. All right, the final step of our moccasin is to put some leaves. Now I have some green paint here for the leaves and I'm gonna do it a little bit differently than I have on these ones, which were sort of like leaves everywhere. But today I'm gonna do just two leaves because we know the fur will cover the top, okay? So start with our green paint after I've very carefully and, and thoroughly rinsed my brush. We'll start with one and we'll do some leaves. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look like all the leaves you see outside. It can just be green and people will know. Yeah, those are leaves. I'm gonna do three. Piak, Nisa, and Sta. Three. <laughs> Now one more time, three leaves on this one. We're gonna go Piak, Nisa, Insta. A little bit different positioning, but overall you get the picture. There we go, I'm gonna rinse these le this uh, green leaf color off my brush and set it aside. And now take a look. Two moccasins with two Alberta roses on it looks so, so great. Now I kind of feel like I want to make the circles a little bit bigger than they are now and add some more yellow. So I'm gonna do that now. And that's something you can do. If you don't like how it is, change it. If you want to add some more, go ahead. It's your work, right? So we're gonna add a bit more yellow to this Alberta rose to kind of hide those leaves and those petals. Here we go. There we are. And just fill in the spaces between our flowers. I hope you guys are having so much fun doing this. I am so enjoying working with you and painting these amazing moose hide moccasins. It is so much fun. So we rinse our brushes thoroughly. We're all done with our painting for now. We put our brushes aside as well as our paint. And now we are left with two beautiful moose hide moccasins. I'm also going to move to the side my paper that held my, um, my paint uh, scraps in it. Put that into the garbage can there. All right. So. Now we have our two moccasins. The next step we're gonna do is add the fur. This is an easy, easy part, but although it is time to start using the glue gun, so we have to be a little bit careful. Now, I would let these dry fully before I glue gun them on. But of course, as you know, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna use our hair dryer and speed up the process so we can get this going right away. And it's as easy as that. My flowers are now dry and ready for uh, adding on the, the uh, fur. Now, like I said before, you can get whatever kind of fur you want. I got this fur at the dollar store. It comes in a big roll. And then I folded it in half, as you can see there. Uh, it was a wider piece and I folded it in half and glued it together so it's ready to be put on our moccasin. Now, these might be a little bit big for this moccasin. So I'm gonna get the scissors so we can cut them a little bit smaller. All right, I have my pair of scissors here and I'm gonna trim these. But what we wanna do first is, is sort of try it on, okay? So we look here, we, we see how big of the hole we have and then we judge, okay, probably about, yeah, I'd say about that big. So we cut off the part we don't need. And let me tell you right now, if you're working with fur or any kind of fluff, it's gonna be messy. It's just all there is to it. So make sure you have your vacuum cleaner ready and then make sure you don't leave a big mess for mom or dad when this project is over. All right, so now I've made those moccasins. It looks like it's gonna be the same for both. I'm gonna just cut both at the same time. You know me, I like to cut two things at once. So we take both moccasin pieces and we snip it the same size, knowing that that's sort of what we're gonna need for our moccasins. And there we go, two of the same, perfect. Let's begin gluing. So the best thing you want to do for the moccasin is put some glue uh, in the center. We're going to put that near the front of our moccasin hole, okay, where the vamp meets the opening of the moccasin. Just a little bit of glue right about there. Flop is going in my nose. <laughs> um, and then we want to put that right on the front of our moccasin. 
right about there. Now don't worry about it covering up the moccasin design too much because it looks cool that way. So you can see here the fluff kind of covers the design. We're not worried about that. So once that front part is on, we're gonna take our glue gun and we're gonna put glue all around here to create a spot to be glued. So I'm trying to show you at the same time in front of this camera. There we go. And again, um, if you're not comfortable with the glue gun, ask somebody who's older to help you out. It's not, um, it's not something you should do if you're not comfortable because you will burn yourself if you're not careful, okay? So we wrap it around, we hold it for three seconds, and we count to three in Cree. One, piak, two, nisa, three, ninsta. And we're done. Release, and your, your fur should stay on your moccasin just like that. Oh my goodness, I absolutely love it. I'm gonna add a little bit more glue on the sides here because I feel like it's not quite enough. You know, just, you see something you need to do with your glue gun or your scissors? You do it. That's the thing about it. This is your art. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be like anybody else's. It doesn't have to go as fast or slow as anybody else's. It's your work. So I'm just taking a little bit more glue on the back because it didn't quite stick. And there we go. Amazing! Look at how cute that is. Oh my goodness, a cute little moccasin. And I love that it has a, a brown or gray fur here. Looks like a little bit of fox or rabbit fur. And I just love that. It's so, so cool. Now let's do the other one. So again, we're gonna do the same thing this time. And we're gonna put um, some glue on the very front of our, our um, fur and set it in place. Just like that. Now this moccasin is a little bit bigger. Did you notice? <laughs> and so uh, it's gonna it's gonna be um, a bit of a, a wider opening, which is fine. So we put our glue all along the opening. I'm gonna put a little bit more glue than I did last time, only because it didn't stick too well last time. So let me take our glue, our fur, and we wrap it along that line of glue, and we hold it in place for three to five seconds. So here we go. Piak, Nisa, Ninsta. Niwa and Niyanin. Five seconds and release and the glue gun should be dry and you wipe all the fluff out of your nose because it's really, really irritating. <laughs> and there we have it. The second moccasin with the fur on it. That's right. The apple bottom moccasin, the boots with the fur. That's what we're making here today. Very, very cool. I love that. So there we go, you guys. We're so close to done. I think we're finished. Oh my goodness. So we have two matching moccasins just like this and I hope you love them. And oh, we got some glue gun strings. It's such a normal thing for glue gun strings, but always put them aside. Don't leave them on the carpet. And there we go. One, two, and the old ones, three, four. Now we have four moccasins. Now, how do we say moose hide moccasins in Cree? Does anyone remember? That's right. Pahkigen nuiksin. Pahkigen nuiksin. And that means moose hide moccasins. And these are them right here. Now let's count how many we have in Cree. We have four moccasins. We're going to count in English and then in Cree. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four. Now let's do it in Cree. Here we go. Piak, Nisa, Ninsta. And Niwa. That's right, that is four in Cree, and congratulations, you did it. You did this amazing project with me, and I'm sure it looks incredible. And if you if you couldn't finish it on time, that's no big deal. You pause the video, you complete what you gotta complete, and you start the video again, as easy as pie. Or watch the whole video, find out what you need to do, and then do it at your own pace, with your own rocks, and hey, maybe you can do something different. Maybe you can make a little animal with your rocks. Maybe you can make a pair of makalaks by putting two rocks together. I don't know. Be creative, have fun, and as always, thank you so much for joining me here with the uh, Aboriginal Congress of Alberta Association. My name is Lance Cardinal, and thank you for joining these art adventures with me. It's been great. May the creator watch over you as long as the sun shines, the grass grows, and the river flows. See you guys later. See you next time. Oh, yeah, four. Four little moccasins dancing together. I love these guys. Ah, oh, four of them. Very, very cool.